Okie dokie. Yay. Actually, I, I hate making stuff on video. I like to concentrate. These are really easy to make. I'm going to make a, a ferrosphere. As you can see, it's uh, completely holographic. You actually place a magnet anywhere over it after you've swilled, swirled, I say swill, swirled the liquid around. You see I have a coating. You will need to uh, uh, generate a uh, ring light of some kind. You can actually use strip LED lighting and place underneath it. Here's a ring light that uh, holds the sphere. The main point is, is that it, the most of the light is actually shooting up into the sphere instead of into your eyeballs. But no matter how you make this, the light's going to shoot up into your eyes. But when you actually coat it, it's going to be a rather dark amber. So most of the light will be in the sphere. And then, of course, you place the magnet anywhere around it, and you have complete hol uh, holography, magnetoholography. And it's completely scalable. If I actually had a glass bowl, I mean, this big, I mean, it would still work. If I had one this big that was hollow, it would still work. So let's actually show you how to make one. You're going to be surprised how easy it is to make a ferrosphere. You can actually go to your, uh, your hobby store. These are actually Christmas bulbs. Um, you can get like a four-pack for ten bucks. I think these are five-inch glass spheres. Uh, yeah, they are. I think they're five-inch glass spheres. The only thing else that you'll uh, need to buy while you're there is uh, some corks. And they always have like a four-pack of these, amazingly enough, to go with the four spheres. And you get like a pack of them for, I don't know, like two bucks. What I'm actually do is uh, to keep the liquid from actually saturating into the cork is I'm going to wrap it with, uh, you could use like a saran wrap. I'm just going to place it over top of the cork like this when I actually insert it so that it creates a non-permeable non -permeable barrier for the liquid. Um, you will need a ferrofluid and mouse milk. The ferrofluid is here. Um, it's about six heaping drops of ferrofluid to about a teaspoon of mouse milk. This is actually naphthene tuline and I forget, it's cancer-causing stuff. This is basically like an early, this has been around since World War II. It's like a prototype version of WD-40. Before WD-40 came along, it was used in aircraft parts and machinery. It's got a nasty uh, smell to it that smells like uh, cancer. Uh, yeah, it's not actual, really, mouse milk. Uh, it's kind of funny that they named it mouse milk. Uh, this sphere needs a bit of a washing out. It's actually got a, a couple of fungus spots in it. Um, apparently a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, humidity got into this. That's all right. This stuff will kill the fungus. <laughs> this stuff will kill the fungus. Um, I've actually had these sitting out for about a year in a spot that's a little too humid. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of mouse milk in here, as you can see. Talk about the uh, Breaking Bad science experiment here, huh? Magneto holography on the cheap. Ultimately, how much does this cost? I mean, if you priced it out per drop of liquid, so 10 would be $2, $3, uh, just under $4 to make one. Yeah, okay, there's about, yeah, a little less than a teaspoon. Yeah, yeah, there's a teaspoon, roughly. Now I'm going to insert about uh, six to eight heaping drops of uh, ferrofluid. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight it's gonna be this dark amber color I'm actually swish it around and actually see how it coats the bottom of uh, the sphere here and it should be a really dark amber okay I still need a couple more drops of ferrofluid there we go and this stuff stains like crazy by the way yeah have I got that about right you can tell it'll be like a dark brown amber color just like the color of this let me match it up with my test example. And I'd say it's pretty damn close. It doesn't have to be super duper accurate, but that's really close. You wipe off the excess ferrofluid around the edge here. You got to be careful, too, since these are cheap uh, Chinese uh, glass globes that you don't push the cork in too hard. Otherwise, it will break because these are not meant to be corked. They're meant to be Christmas tree ornaments. You like fill them with glitter and crap and then hang them off your stupid Christmas tree. That's what they're meant for. So I'm not going to push too hard, just enough to close it. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Here we go. See? 
I'm going to take electrical tape. You can use duct tape. But electrical tape is best. Okay. And I go around here. It's like, well, what about all that crap sticking up on top? Well, we're going to whip out our scissors, and we're going to do uh, this number at the top. Okay. I'm going to trim off the excess of my plastic here. I really do hate making videos, making stuff, because I like to concentrate rather than, like, talk while I'm doing it. Other people like to do that. I, I can't stand doing that, honestly. And we're going to give a nice seal. So now we got a permeable barrier, and I'm going to go up here. Going to make it look pretty, because you might, since you're buying four of these, you make three of them for your buds. Yeah, there we go. There we go, and let's cut it. Cut it there. Here we go. Look! How long did it take me to make that? Most of the time it took me to do that was flapping my damn lips. So, see here I can swirl it around, the liquid around. I got a magnet over here. Let's turn it on and see if it uh, works as good as my other one. Mm, yeah. Let's turn our light on. There we go. Just swirl the liquid around there. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to use this magnet. This is good enough. And it works. I've got too much light going on in here, however, right now. It works. Let me swirl it around some more. Actually, when you start up a new one like this, the, eventually the insides will become completely coated. And it'll uh, swirl around a lot easier and rapidly coat the inside. The bigger the magnet you use, the better, too, by the way. See, so right now you can actually see I'm pulling... Look as I'm pulling the liquid up with the ring magnet. It's better to actually use a cube magnet than like a ring magnet. There's any sort of larger, more powerful magnet, but any of these will work. It works! So there we go. It took me... If I subtracted out my lip flapping, it took about... What? few minutes to make this. And there we go. There's how you make your ferrosphere. Really complicated. If you like these videos, you can always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Well, that's kind of neat. You know, if I'd like made something like this, because look, this stuff was available in the 19... Well, ferrofluid hasn't been around super long, but I could actually make ferrofluid back in the 60s. You could. Um, you got a surfactant and just the uh, the nanoparticles of iron. Uh, I could have made this a long time ago. If you had something like this back in the day, people it would have had it in science magazines and everything. Now everybody's so jaded, even though it's completely new. This is a completely new device, and it's magnetoholography. People are so jaded. They're like, eh. That's where society has gotten to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. That's how you make a... A uh, ferrosphere. Mm, ba -dum -bum. Yep. I've had too much cough, too much caffeine today. Thank you.